Good morning, class. Today, we will read the poem of your book, Honeycomb, The Check. Before we begin the poem, I would like to ask you, what is a check? I hope you are all familiar with the word check. For example, a cow shed, a tool shed, a wood shed, a vehicle shed. Shed is actually a small room away from the main house for storing or keeping things, animals, tools, vehicles, etc. From the main building, from the main house, it is a little bit far away. And whatever things break or they become old, we just keep them, store them in a shed. So this poem is also about a shed. It is composed by Frank Flynn. Frank Flynn was an Australian poet. He was not only a poet, he was a doctor also. He was a missionary priest also. He was born on 6 December 1906. And he died in the year 2000. So before we understand the poem, I would recite the poem and all of you follow me in your books. There is a shed at the bottom of our garden with a spider's web hanging across the door. The hinges are rusty and creak in the wind. When I am in bed, I lie and I listen. I open the door one day. There is a dusty old window around at the side with three cracked panes of glass. I often think there is someone staring at me each time that I pass. I will peep through that window one day. My brother says there is a ghost in the shed who hides under the rotten floorboards and if I ever dare to set foot inside, he'll jump out and chop off my head. But I'll take a peek one day. I know that there isn't really a ghost. My brother tells lies to keep the shed for his den. There isn't anyone staring or making strange noises. And the spider has been gone from his web since I don't know when. I'll go into that shed one day soon, but not just yet. You all can see the picture of the shed in your books and you can understand what is the condition of the shed. Now, let us understand the poem. In this poem, the poet is narrating an incident. It is in the form of a narration. So we can call that this poem is a narration. It's a narration because the poet is narrating an incident that uh, happened with him. So let us understand the poem now. There is a shed at the bottom of our garden. The poet is a child. And what does the child say? That there is a shed at the bottom of his garden. 
of our garden with a spider's web hanging across the door you can see the door in the picture and what is hanging across the door a spider's web the web all of you know what is a web that the spiders make when anything is neglected so they just make a web around the things so with a spider's web hanging across the door the spider has made a web and it is hanging across the door the hinges are rusty and creak in the wind what are hinges hinges they are the joints hinges they are the joints that connect the door so when any house or building a room is neglected what happens the hinges they become rusty slight brownish color rust so hinges are the joints that connect the door with the frame so the hinges are rusty and creak in the wind creak is a sound isn't it when the doors they move they make a sound because they are old they are not oiled so they make a creaking sound just as your shoes also creak sometimes when you walk so the hinges are rusty and creak in the wind when the wind blows the hinges they move the door moves and they produce a shrieking sound a loud sound that is creaking when i am in bed i know and i listen now when i am lying in my bed in my house i can listen this creaking sound i can hear this creaking sound i open that door one day now the poet the child has made a promise in his mind that one day he will definitely open that door and he will see what is inside the shed now the next stanza there is a dusty old window around at the side what else is there there is a dusty old window what kind of a window dusty dusty means that is full of dust if you do not clean your rooms for many days if you do not sweep your room for many days what happens the rooms the windows they are all covered with dust we clean our rooms every day but if you neglect them for some time what happens they become dusty they are full of dust so there is a dusty old window around at the side at the side of the shed there is an old window and what kind of a window it is dusty with three cracked panes of glass and this window has got window panes window panes the glass that covers the windows our windows they have panes the glass sheet that is on the windows that is called the panes what kind of panes they are cracked they are broken there is a crack suppose this is a window pane it has got a crack they are broken i often think there is someone staring at me and many times this thought comes to my mind that somebody is inside the shed and that person is staring at me looking at me fixedly stare okay you stare at things with broad open eyes it is called staring so i don't think there is someone i often think there is someone staring at sometimes it comes to my mind that somebody is looking at me somebody is staring at me each time that i pass whenever i pass through that way i feel somebody is looking at me i'll peep through that window one day of course one day definitely i will peep through that window peeping means just looking from a hole you also peep sometimes through the doors through the windows to see what is inside so he also wants to peep and whenever he says i will pass through that window i will peep and see what is inside that the child has a great curiosity he wants to know what is inside the shed my brother says there is a ghost in the shed now the next character in the poem is the poet's brother so what does his brother say 
there's a ghost in the shed. There is. There's a ghost in the shed. His brother often tells him that a ghost lives inside the shed. Ghost, a spirit. All of you know what's a ghost. You read ghost stories. And whenever you read ghost stories, you have a fear in your mind. It creates a very spooky picture in your mind. So my brother says there's a ghost in the shed who hides under the rotten floor post. And where is this ghost? He is hiding under the rotten floorboards. What type of floorboards? That is rotten. Rotten means that I have completely got damaged because they are no more in use. And floorboards, the wooden floor, the wooden boards that are on the floor. The wooden boards that are on the floor. So they have become old, so they are they have become rotten. And if I ever dare to set foot inside, now his brother warns him. His brother gives him a warning. If I ever dare to set foot inside, dare means you have the courage. So my brother alerts me, he warns me that if I have the courage to set foot inside any day, what will the ghost do? He'll jump out and chop off my head. He will come out, he will jump from the shed. And what will he do? He will chop your head. Chop means to cut. You also chop things to chop the vegetables. So when you cut something with a sharp instrument, it's called chopping. You chop the wood, you chop the vegetables. So what will that ghost do? He will jump out and he will cut the head of the child, the poet. But I will take a peek one day. But the poet is not afraid, he's not frightened. Though his brother is frightening him, giving him the thing, the idea that the ghost will jump and chop off his head. But the poet has a great curiosity. He has made a promise in his mind, in his heart. I'll take a peek one day. Peek also means look. I will have a look. I will peek. I will have a look. I will have a look at the shed one day. Definitely I will look at the inside. What is inside the shed? I know that there isn't really a ghost. My brother tells lies to keep the shed for his friend. Now what does the child say now? I know there isn't any, any ghost there. Is it? Is it? There is not. I know that there isn't any ghost inside the shed. My brother tells lies to keep the shed for his den. What does my brother do? He tells a lie. And why does he tell a lie? Because he wants to keep that shed safe for his den. What is a den here? Den means the hiding place. The hiding place. All of you also play the game of hide and seek. You also try to keep such places for yourself where nobody can find you. Okay? So his brother doesn't want that the boy should look inside the shed because he wants to keep that place safe for his den, for his hiding place. There isn't anyone staring or making strange noises. Nobody is there who is making strange types of noises, who is staring at me or making strange types of noises. And the spider has been gone from the web. And now I can see that the spider has also gone. The spider who had made the web on the door of the shed, he has also gone away. Since I don't know when, I do not know when the spider went away. But the spiders, they keep on moving from one place to another in search of their food. They make new webs every time. So the spider who had made the web, he has also gone. The web is there, but the spider has gone. I go into that shed one day soon. Now the child makes a promise. He has a curiosity in his heart that definitely one day I will go and I will find out what is inside the shed. But not just yet. But he doesn't know the time in future. Whenever he will have the courage, whenever he wishes he will go. But not now. Not just now. Though he will definitely go, but not just yet, not just now. 
Okay. Now I hope you must have understood the poem. Now let us see that the poets make their poems beautiful by using some poetic devices, literary devices, just to make the poem beautiful. Now you will understand the first thing that the poet has used here. That is, this poem doesn't have any particular rhyme scheme. Okay, you can see the first stanza: garden, do, wind, listen, day. It doesn't have any particular rhyme scheme. It is a free verse. If you want to make the rhyme scheme, you can simply say A, B, C, D, E. No word is rhyming with each other. So in this stanza, first stanza, there is no particular rhyme scheme. But the poet has used alliteration. You have to learn what is alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of sounds resting words, especially consonants. Consonants, you know, A, E, I, O, U, that is, that are vowels, and rest of the alphabets, they are consonants. Now, the words that are very near to each other, and they produce a sound. For example, you can see in the second line, with a spider's web, with a web, they are producing the same sound. So, what is this poetic device called? It is called alliteration. Okay, you can find more. Again, in the third line, fourth line, when I am in bed, I lie and I listen. Lie and listen. Same. L word, L sound repeated. In the last line also, I'll open that door one day. Door and day. They are producing the same sound. They are all consonants. So what is this figure of speech called? It is called an iteration. Likewise, you can find in the second stanza also, just see and find out. In the third line, I think, I often think there is someone staring at me. What are the syllables repeated here? Think, there. Someone staring, S and T. Then, again, in the last line of the second stanza, through that window one day, through that through T, T sound is there. Again, you can see in the following stanzas, if there is any repetition of the syllables, where we can find out the alliteration. And again, in the last stanza, staring strange noises, staring and strange. So what is this called? The repetition of the syllables of the consonant sound that is called alliteration. Now, the poet has used a lot of imagination. Imagery is there. He is imagining a ghost inside the shed. The ghost is bouncing, the ghost jumping. He will attack. So, this is the imagination that the poet has used. So, we can just call it imagery. Now, let us pick some rhyming words. See the second stanza, in the first stanza, no word is rhyming with each other. But in the third stanza, what are the rhyming words here? You can see the rhyming words. Glass. Pass. These two words are rhyming with each other. Then see the next stanza, shed and head. Then in the next stanza, then when. Then the last stanza, then is rhyming with which word? When. So these are the rhyming words that have been used in the now, one more thing we have to find out. The poet has 
mention the number of phrases here that tell us that the shed is in a neglected stage now find out those phrases that tell us that the shed is in a neglected state it has not been used for many days or perhaps months and years the condition is not good in the first stanza what is that phrase that tells that the shed is in a neglected stage spiders web hanging across the door where do the spiders make the web where nobody is coming and going nobody is using the house so spiders web hanging across the door first thing second the hinges are rusty and creak in the wind hinges they are rusty they have become old they are covered with rust and they are creaking then in the next sense of dusty old window this also tells that uh, the shed is in a neglected stage then cracked panes of glass this is also stating that the shed is not in a proper condition again see the next one rotten floor boards rotten floor boards also tells that the shed is in a neglected stage so all these phrases used by the poet tells that the shed is not used and it is old it is neglected nobody visits that place now let us find out some adjectives that are going on with certain words okay now what word has been used for hinges what kind of hinges they are rusty hinges so the word that is qualifying the hinges that is rusty if you ask a question what type of hinges they are rusty hinges then for the window two adjectives have been used what are those two adjectives dusty old window what type of window dusty and old so they are also qualifying the window they are also adjectives then next one cracked panes of glass what type of window panes they are cracked they are broken there's a crack okay so these are some of the phrases in the first two stanzas in the third stanza also there is an adjective that is qualifying the floor boards what type of floor boards they are rotten rotten you know anything that decays that is rotten suppose you eat vegetables or fruits for uh, many days they get rotten so in the same way the floor boards they are wooden so they have got decayed they have got rotten so what type of floor boards rotten floor boards so these are some of the adjectives that the poet has used to describe certain things and if you want to get the rhyme scheme of the second stanza you can make it a b c d t a b c b d because two words are rhyming here so i hope all of you must have understood the poem you must have enjoyed the poem and uh, you would certainly like to see a shed that is around your house your locality your neighborhood and see the condition in which the sheds lie if they are not open if they are not taken care and if they are neglected one thing that the poet tells here is the promise that he will definitely go and see the shed one day now at the end of each stanza there is one line that he is often repeating there is a repetition of one promise that he is doing see the first stanza i'll open that door one day he is promising definitely he will open that door one day i'll peep through that window one day 
he will go and look he will peep and see what is inside third sense of but i'll take a peek one day definitely i will have a look of the shed and in the last days of i will go into that shed one day soon a promise that he is making that definitely one day he will go and see what is inside the shed so once he has made the promise he wants to fulfill his promise though the time is not telling in future whenever he wants he will go and look at the shed so that's all in the poem now all of you will just give a short description of the shed in your own words write a paragraph describing the shed that's all for today thank you Thank you.